In this video, we are going to see square and pulse generator. So by seeing the name square and pulse generator, both appears to be same, but there is a difference between square wave form and a pulse wave form. What is the difference between square wave form and a pulse wave form? Simply we can say in terms of duty cycle. In terms of duty cycle. So, duty cycle is the parameter which differentiates a square waveform and a pulse waveform. So, what is the difference? Suppose if you say a square waveform, duty cycle must be 50%. Okay. If duty cycle is 50%, we can say the waveform is a square waveform. That means on time period is equal to off time period. What is the formula of duty cycle? Duty cycle is equal to duty cycle is equal to t on by t on by total time period t on plus t of total time period is nothing but t on plus t of suppose if both the half cycles have equal time periods then duty cycle is equal to how much it is 50 percent duty cycle is equal to exactly of nothing but of into 100 that is nothing but 50 percent okay if other than this 50 percent if we have then that type of waveforms can be considered as a pulse waveform a pulse waveform okay so the fundamental difference between a pulse generator and a square waveform generator is a duty cycle these generators are used as measuring devices in combination with CRO. They cannot be used as singly devices. Definitely we have to use a combination of CRO to measure any of the circuits which are under test. So they provide both the quantitative and qualitative information of the system which is under test. Okay, what any type of signal generator in the starting only I told you in the introduction of signal generators. So any type of signal generator most commonly used for a circuits which are under test. So we are giving the input, the signal which is being generated by any of these generators that signal will be applied to the circuits which are under test. Later we are measuring the quantities, different quantities like voltage or current or resistor values, whatever we are going to measure that can be measured by applying the signal that are coming from these generators. So they are made use of transient response testing of amplifiers. Now let us see the block diagram of square waveform and a pulse waveform generator. So this is the block diagram. If you observe clearly this block diagram is similar to function generator. This block diagram is similar to function generator block diagram. Block diagram of this uh, square and pulse wave waveform generator is similar to similar to what function generator block diagram function generator in the previous video i have done this function generator i have explained what is a function generator and how the function generator is going to be generated three different waveforms like a triangular waveform square waveform and a sinusoidal waveform the same type of generating loop here also we are using Okay, however, I will explain the block diagram here for this square and pulse waveform. So first, the external frequency control we are using, frequency control setup. Frequency control setup, this drives the upper constant current source and lower constant current source. Here, it is used to set the frequency of outcoming signal like a square waveform or a pulse waveform. Whatever it is, the time period is same. Nothing but the frequency of both of these signals is same. That frequency is going to be fixed at this particular point which can be selected by the user. So, frequency can be selected in terms of edges. Later, the output of this one is given to upper constant current source and lower constant current source. Upper constant current source, lower constant current source, both can be used to select the symmetricity of the waveform. Symmetricity of the waveform. Remember the symmetricity of this, symmetricity of this uh, square and pulse waveform. Symmetricity of this square and pulse waveform is varying from 25 percent to 75 percent symmetricity of this square and pulse waveform 
can be varied from 25% to 75% okay, by this symmetricity switch which is applied to upper constant current source and lower constant current source. Okay, See here, this upper constant current source switching circuit, lower constant current source and this capacitor and this is my trigger. All these together is known as a basic generating loop. What are they? Upper constant current source, lower constant current source, switching circuit, capacitor and this smith trigger. Smith trigger, switching capacitor, switching circuit is nothing but just it is a switch, it is a switch that acts between the upper constant current source and lower constant current source. Whenever the capacitor reaches a specific determined value, predetermined value, then immediately the switching circuit will switch off the upper constant current source and switches on the lower constant current source. That can be determined by the Smith trigger. Okay. So, these blocks are known as basic generating loop. Okay. The output, I will explain what is a basic generating loop in the next slide. The output of this basic generating loop is given to different amplifier sections with different output impedances. Okay, so here we have taken 600 ohms as an output impedance, another one is a 50 ohms as an output impedance and the last one is a trigger output. So along with this square waveform and sine waveform, square waveform and pulse waveform, we are also having some trigger output and uh, most commonly the pulse waveforms with narrow on time periods or narrow off time periods, so they can be called as a trigger signals. Okay, first let us see what is the basic generating loop and how it generates the square waveform. Okay, as I said, the frequency range is covered in seven decade steps here. The frequency here in the block diagram, we have seen the frequency control in the starting starting frequency control. That frequency control is having a frequency knob. That frequency can be varied from one hedges to 10 mega hedge. That frequency can be varied from one hedge to 1H to 10 mega hedge. <coughs> Remember the variation of frequency from minimum 1H to maximum 10 mega hedge. That too in 7 decade steps. That means in 7 different steps we can vary this frequency. And the duty cycle I told you already. Duty cycle which varies from 25% to 75%. And as I said here, two independent outputs available with the 50 ohms output impedance and 600 ohms output impedance. What is the difference between these two ohms output impedance? So if you take 50 ohms source that supplies a pulses with a rise and fall time of 5 nanoseconds at 5 volts peak. Okay, so what do you mean by pulse waveform? See, practically we are expecting a pulse waveform like this. Practically, we will expect a pulse waveform always like this or a square waveform like this. See, this is the pulse. How it is pulse? Because the duty cycle is not 50%. See, on this is the on time period and this is the off time period. This is off time period and this is on time period. <laughs> if both of these are equal, then we can say this is a square waveform as these two are different this is a pulse waveform they can be vice versa on time period may be more or and off time period may be less that can also be treated as pulse now see this is the ideal this is the ideal case how the pulse waveform but practically the wave will not immediately rises at a zero time and immediately falls at a zero time. It takes some amount of time. That means the practical waveform will be looking like this. It is having some rise time and it is having some fall time. And similarly like this, it is having some rise time. It is having some fall time like this. This is the way how the practical signal appears to be. So from here to here, we can call it as a rise time TR. Again, from here to here, we can call it as <coughs> fall time TF. So if we have such type of parameters rise time and fall time then we can say it is a practical waveform. So so if you go for 50 ohms impedance output then we have a 5, 5 nanoseconds rise time and fall time with an amplitude of 5 volts. So from here to here how much it is 5 volts. 
okay suppose if you are going for 600 ohms the specifications will be 70 nanoseconds rise time and fall time with 30 volts peak to peak so rise time fall time these two parameters will be 70 nanoseconds and <coughs> A peak to peak voltage of 30 volts peak voltage of 30 volts so these are the some important points about this square wave and uh, pulse waveform <coughs> now let us see the basic generating loop so i said already a basic generating loop consisting of basic generating loop consisting of constant current source upper constant current source lower constant current source a switching network capacitor and a smittering guide and a spin trigger what is this what is the purpose of spin trigger any type of input waveform can be converted into a square waveform any type of input waveform can be converted into a square waveform that is the purpose of spin trigger <coughs> you give sine wave you give square wave you give triangular wave whatever may be the input a spin trigger simply converts into, into a square waveform how how the spin trigger converts because it is having some predetermined value in it Okay, that always compares with the incoming voltage. So whenever it crosses that incoming, uh, whenever it crosses uh, the incoming voltage, crosses the reference voltage, output becomes zero. Otherwise, it is one. Okay. Uh, now let us assume the con upper constant current source is in non-state, as we have discussed in the case of function generator. Here also, it is same. Assume the case upper constant current source is in non-state and lower constant current source is in off state then as the upper constant current source is in on state the current i1 starts flowing the current i1 starts flowing and switch is also connected to this point only so current i1 starts flowing and the capacitor charges capacitor slowly charges see this is the way how the capacitor charges when i1 is in on state that means i1 is flowing okay until what point until which point the capacitor has to charge until a specific voltage until a specific voltage because voltage across capacitor vc is always keep on applying to the input of the spit trigger internally spit trigger is having a reference voltage where it when the capacitor voltage charge uh, crosses this reference voltage automatically the output of this spit trigger goes down okay so voltage of the capacitor charges charges and whenever it reaches some predetermined value that is equal to the reference value immediately the output of the smith trigger goes to logic zero and that makes the switch to connect to the second constant current source nothing but up lower constant current source then what happens i2 starts flowing so the capacitor discharges capacitor discharges so capacitor whatever the charge that has been accumulated by the capacitor in the previous case now discharges now discharges see i2 i2 is having on and i i1 is having off okay so the old complete voltage waveform is if you take the time complete time period is nothing but t that is the total time period of the output waveform so here there are two points we can remember <clears throat> the ratio i1 by i2 here the there is a significance of this current i1 and i2 so if you take the ratio i1 by i2 that ratio determines the duty cycle of the complete square waveform or pulse waveform generated by this signal generator okay duty cycle is determined by the ratio i1 by i2 and is controlled by symmetry control what is the symmetry control in the starting big figure we have seen there is a symmetry that is connected to these two constant current source so that is nothing but symmetry here it is symmetry okay that symmetry is controlled by these currents only okay that's why i1 by i2 determines the duty cycle okay the sum and the second point is second important significance of this i1 and i2 is the sum of i1 and i2 determines the frequency see this is the i1 and this is i2 if you add these two that gives the total frequency total frequency okay that is the importance of this i1 and i2 now with this square waveform which is coming here at the output 
so whatever is the signal coming here that signal passes through this output amplifier 1 and output amplifier 2 and the third one is trigger output circuit see output amplifier 1 is having an amplitude some amplitude selector here it is also when here is nothing but uh, some amplitude selector and the step attenuator is to select a different amplitudes at different levels so one is i have already explained 600 ohms resistor what it is it is having a 70 nanoseconds rise time and fall time followed by 30 volts peak okay and if you take uh, 5 uh, 50 ohms output uh, then it is having uh, what is that it is having 5 nanoseconds uh, 5 nanoseconds with 5 volts peak okay and the third one is a trigger output a trigger output is nothing but it is the pulse waveform it is the pulse waveform with very less on and more off this is the trigger waveform if you take this is the positive triggered signal if you go for the negative triggered signal trigger signal is having negative peak and more on peak more on very less off so this is the trigger pulse trigger pulse is nothing but a very shortest duration signal this is the square and pulse waveform requirements some requirements are there the pulse should have minimum distortion so that any distortion in the display is solely due to the circuit which is under test the basic characteristics of the pulse are rise time overshoot ringing sag and undershoot so these are the different characteristics a pulse waveform should have the pulse should have a sufficient maximum amplitude if appreciable output power is required by the test circuit example for magnetic core memory at the same time the attenuation range should be adequate to produce small amplitude pulses to prevent over driving of some text circuits so see whenever we are using these type of circuits in any testing circuits the amplitude must be our selected levels okay we should select our required range so that the testing circuit can select any type of amplitudes and the range of frequency control of the pulse repetition rate should meet the needs of the requirement okay whatever the signal generator we are always designing that signal generator should meet our requirements always so that we can use it for multiple purposes so this is the block diagram and explanation of square and pulse waveform thank you